Okay, let's uh, solve a mystery that shouldn't be a mystery, and let's correct some nonsense. Okay, let's make things so simple. Simpler than a post-it note. Now, full frame has some advantages over DX crop sensor cameras. What would those be? Why is it that you would choose, in general, portraiture, uh, wedding photography, and landscapes, uh, choose a full frame camera? Number one, focals. Uh, when it comes to uh, DX crop sensors, you have a crop factor. When it comes to the really wide lenses that you need for full frame and landscape photography specifically, full frame's got the huge advantage there. Obviously so. You also have a better gain over a period of time. However, that gap is narrowed drastically, uh, given better uh, post-sensor uh, uh, signal processing. So you have a better uh, detail in the shadows over a given. All exposure is gain in time. Given the exact same period of time, the larger photo sites, the bigger eyeballs than sensors have better gain, and this is incredibly important in shadow detail. And pulling that out, and hopefully you're shooting in RAW files. So we have the focals, and uh, then we have uh, the factor of uh, the gain. We have a better gain on uh, larger photo sites. So we have uh, better lenses that uh, match the focals that we need. That's not to say that there aren't perfect uh, portraiture lenses for DX crop sensors. Now let's solve a mystery that I keep hearing this nonsense, and when I keep hearing something repeated several times, then uh, it's time to squash it like a bug. The notion that there is magnification that is going on in any part of this camera, okay? There are two levels of magnification. Obviously, the DX crop sensor is smaller. Let's take a look at the DX crop sensor here on the left, not the scale, compared to the full frame sensor on the right. There is nothing inside this camera. Or if I take the same lens, this lens, for example, any lens, and I throw it on a full frame versus a crop sensor. A crop is a crop is a crop, okay? Field of view. Field of view changes, not the depth of field. There is no magnification that is going on in this camera, between this camera and this lens, or this lens mounted on this camera, versus the exact same thing with a full frame. Magnification only occurs when you take that SD card out, or compact flash card out, and you drag it into your monitor, and you blow it up for taking a look at it. Or, obviously, when you go to print. So that is where magnification occurs. Oh, but wait, look, you see these uh, large little circles here? Obviously, this is not the scale, of course. <laughs> we have these large eyeballs in the full frame sensor. So, well, obviously, this DX crop sensor needs to be magnified more than the full frame. Okay? There's no magnification that's going on here. There's more translational information on the DX crop sensor than there is on the full frame. Now, things are starting to shift. There are actually a couple exceptions to that now, like the uh, new. Uh, Canon 5D 51 megapixel camera, which actually has a DX pixel pitch, or the tiny little photo sites on a DX camera. It's because signal processing is improved dramatically. The advantage of the larger photo sites, which have better gain over a period of time, and everything is gain in time, gain in time. Two native gains, your aperture, what that's at, and the photo sites. And time, of course, being shutter speed. All exposure is gain in time. It doesn't matter if it's full frame, crop sensor, whatever the hell lens you're using, whatever the hell camera you're shooting, everything is gain in time. This gives you a signal-to-noise ratio for correct exposure. Everything is gain in time. Everything is gain in time. There is no magnification that is going on in this damn camera. Let's take a look at a little person down here. Now, you see, this is an undeniable fact. And if you're going to argue to me that there's any magnification going on in this DX crop sensor camera, in this lens, or this lens in this camera, then you are smoking crack. There is none. This lens is an idiot. Every lens is an idiot. It drops the same light. It drops the same light. If I'm standing here and I don't move, and I throw this 400mm uh, lens, this huge honking lens on this camera, the projection of the little person down here, or a bird, or whatever the hell it is you're shooting, will be exactly the same, full frame or crop. Obviously, you can see that the person fills up more of the frame and the crop than it does in the full frame, but the person is exactly the same light projection. Exactly the same. This lens, out of its rear element, craps out exactly the same light. It doesn't give a damn what size sensor is underneath it. There ain't no magnification going on. A crop is a crop is a crop is a crop is a crop. See, the lens, the person, is the exact same projection as this rear element on a crop sensor or a full frame. 
no magnification exists between this lens and this camera or this lens and a full frame. Zero magnification. Now, <clears throat> where magnification does occur, as we've already stated, is in your computer and when you go to print. Yeah, so obviously, this needs to be magnified more to reach an 8x10 or a 20x30, right? That's right, but you're also forgetting the fact, let me roll my eyes like an idiot here, you're also forgetting the fact that you see all this little information that exists here, that does not exist here, you see, this little person, where he sits on all these little tiny photo sites, there is more translational information here, on the DX crop, while this image needs to be magnified more to reach an 8x10, from here to here, this needs to be magnified less to reach an 8x10 or 20x30 than the DX crop sensor does. Yes, obviously so. There is more information here. So in other words, while I have to magnify this person, which is exactly the same projection as on the full frame, obviously this needs to be enlarged more to reach an 8x10, 20x30, whatever you plan on doing. There is more data here. More data. More data. There's more information here. This lens, if it were scaled up, this is a 24 megapixel Nikon D7100. If it were scaled up with the exact same pixel pitch, the exact same size eyeballs on the sensor, which would be right here in the center versus the large eyeballs on a full frame, okay, this would be a 54 megapixel uh, camera. Now, <clears throat> let's take the premise of uh, professional wildlife shooters and photographers, bird shooters that are hardcore professionals, National Geographic, the like. They've got a $13,000 Nikkor 600mm f4. $13,000. They can buy whatever damn camera they want. So why don't you tell me? Now here's the mystery, okay? Solve for the mystery. Solve for A. Why would someone with a $13,000 lens stick a teeny little $500 uh, D well it's actually cheaper than $500 now. $500 D7100 on the back of that big old expensive lens. Why aren't they sticking a D810 on the back of it? Why aren't they sticking a D750 on the back of it? Why? Why? Because all the nature, wildlife, and bird photographers, 95% of the time, are cropping the hell out of their shots. And since the circle of projection is exactly the same from this lens or the $13,000 lens, on the full frame sensor it is on the DX crop sensor, yeah, you have to magnify it more, yes. But these people are shooting nine times out of ten in very good lighting. So gain, while there's less gain on the smaller photo sites, is not an issue because they've got tons of light, usually. Not always, but usually. There is more information here on this DX crop sensor. You see these little tiny pixel pitches right here, little tiny dots, a lot more versus the big photo sites on the full frame. Yeah, see that's the difference. See, nobody seems to understand that fact. Well, not nobody. I'm making a generalization here. Because I keep getting flack from people talking about magnification. Why well, don't you stick a lens on a DX? I just magnify it. There's no magnifications going on between this and this. There's no magnification that's going on inside this camera. Zero magnification exists, is processed, is done by, occurs inside a DX crop sensor camera. None. A crop is a crop is a crop is a crop. It doesn't exist. If I cut this out, if I cut this center section out, have I enlarged it? No. If I go to show it on the screen or go to print it, I do have to enlarge it. To make this the same size as this, I will have to enlarge it. But at the point of capture and where this is buffered onto this card, there is no magnification that exists between this lens and this damn camera. It does not occur. It occurs later when you go to look at it on a big old screen or a little screen or a gigantic screen, and it's enlarged. But here you've got an advantage, because there is more information on that DX crop sensor camera. Like I said, this would be a 54 megapixel sensor camera, if it were the exact same pixel pitch and scaled up. 54 means that per square millimeter of sensor, if you get a little person down here in the picture, or bird, or, you know, freckle-breasted woodpecker, whatever the hell it is you're taking a shot of, that means that there is more information on his little fuzzy beak and all this you know, all the information that you want to be there when you crop the hell out of that shot with this camera than there is on an expensive full-frame camera. More data. More information. Does it have to be enlarged more on the computer and going to print? Yes, it does. Obviously so. But there is no magnification that is occurring between these two and these two together. Does not occur. 
So tell me again why someone with a $13,000 lens, for example, a true professional National Geographic shooter, hardcore bird professional photographer, is using a super expensive lens on a very cheap little DX camera. Yeah, when you solve that answer, then you will have your comprehension. Okay? So yes, there are a couple advantages of a DX crop sensor camera. There are several advantages of a full-frame sensor camera. The focals. Uh, slightly better gain, especially for the shadows. This is, you know, this is why you want a full-frame camera for landscape. This is why you want, ideally, not to say this can't take perfect landscape shots. However, getting a nice wide, uh, you know, a stick of 15 to 30 on this camera, you know, it's cropped out. It's not perfect for landscape because it's perfect for full frame, 15, 30 millimeters. But on this, you got a crop between 15 and 30. So, yeah, the best camera for portraiture and landscape is going to be a full frame sensor camera. Full frame sensors have an advantage. This has an advantage. Okay? Make it simple. Even if I make it simple, some people don't understand. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I won't make that comment. I was about to make a comment I shouldn't have said, so. Thanks. Wake up. Wake up.